Here is the first look at the new Breitling Chronomat B01. In front of me, we have four variants. We have the silver dial, the blue dial, the copper dial, which looks kind of like a salmon-y pink color. It's really beautiful. And also the green dial. Welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison, as always. And before we start this video, I was digging through my stats the other day and realized that 81% of you that watch these videos haven't yet subscribed to the channel. If you could do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so the main difference in these new models is the fact that they come with a rubber strap. So you have the combination of a blue rubber strap with the blue dial, a green rubber strap with the green dial, or a black rubber strap with both the copper and the silver dial. Now the copper color looks a lot more salmon-y to me, like I said at the start. And this is a kind of trending color that we can see across the industry coming into play. I know that Longines have been playing with it. I know that Tudor have been kind of messing around with it as, as kind of accent and tastes. It's, it's really nice and it actually looks a lot better in person than it does over the screen. These watches come in at 42 millimeters and come in at 15.1 millimeters in thickness. So they are that little bit more chunky, that little bit more bold. They're definitely not for the faint hearted. I would say you need 6.5 inch wrists or above in order to really portray this watch in the right way because it's definitely a more masculine watch. Adding to that kind of big bold style, the lug to lug on this model comes in at 50.5 millimeters. Now you can actually see the, the, the kind of boldness, the, the kind of bigger style coming in on the rubber strap that they've added to this watch. It's quite thick, it's quite sturdy, and it looks a little bit more prominent and less tapered than your, your, your classic watches that are maybe a little bit more elegant. These four new variants come in stainless steel, and the stainless steel has a combination of brushed and polished metal, which gives it a really nice kind of vibrance and flair to it when you reflect it in the light. Now, something that I love about this watch, and that is a dying breed in the industry, is the stainless steel rotatable bezel. It's unidirectional. Listen to this. It sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty good. And for the fact that this bezel doesn't have teeth, really, for the most part, it's quite flat, it actually turns really nice and easy. I really like that. Stainless steel bezels in the industry are quickly and quite rapidly being replaced by ceramic. And we all kind of know why that is. I mean, ceramic is that little bit more durable, it's less likely to scratch, but I just feel like stainless steel bezels are more classic, more vintage-esque, more, more classy in their nature. And I just love the way they catch and reflect the light. It's, it's just a look that you cannot replicate. Now, something really interesting that they've done with the bezel, instead of just making it all polished and all quite plain and unidimensional, they've actually added four kind of like stand points that you can see. Now, these come in at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 mark. It gives this dial from the bezel a lot more depth. Now these are actually in brushed instead of polished like the bezel and it gives it more of an angular kind of, I would say Genta-esque design. It's more kind of modern, it's more sporty and it just, it looks and feels good to touch. I know that's weird and it's definitely a watch snobby thing to say but it, it does. Story time, the first watch, the first Amiga that I ever had was actually called the Amiga Great White. And it was an older variation of the Amiga Seamaster 300 meters. And it had a stainless steel bezel. Selling that watch will forever be my biggest watch journey regret. And on that note, what is your biggest watch journey regret? I'm kind of curious. When we take a closer look at the rubber strap, we can see that it is a textured rubber strap and it has a combination of kind of this textured material and this more kind of shiny looking rubber. And actually it's quite interesting because depending on the way you reflect that in the light, it catches it in certain ways. I've not seen this effect used with rubber in a very, very long time. And I kind of forgot how much I like it. It's really, really nice. Now it does have a pin buckle and also a deployant clasp at the bottom here. It's very, very easy, very comfortable. And it's just really nicely rounded off. It's really nicely done at that clasp and deployant clasp area. At the right hand side mark, we of course have that crown and those two pushers because of course this is a chrono model. 
Getting into the detail of the dial on all of these watches, all of them have black sub dials. So there's no color variation between the sub dials. They're all sort of standard across each of these watches. The real difference comes in the dial colors. So the silver dial looks a lot more white to me. It looks a lot more bright, a lot more vibrant. And actually this is one of my favorites of the bunch. The blue dial is, is nice, but in my opinion, I've never been that attracted to blue. I think it's because it's maybe that little bit more mainstream, that little bit more safe. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I've just always been attracted to more vibrant, bolder stuff rather than blues. Now, the way that the blue actually contrasts with the black is quite minimal, so you could argue that that's that little bit harder to read, but it still looks nice in certain lights, and when you reflect in the light, there's this beautiful sun ray pattern that runs through it, and it, it, it is quite vibrant. The copper, to me, looks a little bit more salmon-y kind of brown. It is probably my favorite of the bunch, and I just love that brown color coming through within the industry, that brown coppery salmon slash color coming through in the industry. Partly because my second name is brown, but also because I think it's a really elegant, vintage looking color. I can imagine wearing this in 20, 30, 40 years time when I'm 60, 70, 80 years old. Whereas I maybe wouldn't see myself wearing uh, ice blue color when I'm that age. The green is downright sexy. The green's probably going to be the biggest bang of this range in general, just because of how vibrant and beautiful it is. Now, I actually have the green on the bracelet at the moment, and actually, I do believe that the bracelet gives it more personality because it pops the dial out that little bit more. However, the rubber strap in green is also very nice, and I did get hands-on with that. However, with that said, again, because it is a darker dial and the sub-dials aren't brighter, you could argue that there's less contrast there, although it does remain pretty easy to read. All the second hands on these models are the same. They are all in red. And I love that splash of color that contrasts really, really nicely with the dials. Again, though, I could argue that because the copper is kind of more of a reddy color, it's harder to see the second hand against that copper dial. But this is just total watch snobbery jargon I'm saying, so we'll move on. You know, guys, when I had these watches on my wrist, I did feel like the silver variant that I'm, that I'm literally is in my hand at the moment was very like a Rolex Daytona kind of panda. It's, it's, it's really, really nice. And on that note, what is on your wrist today? Please let me know in the comments. It's time for the Chisholm Hunter tradition, which of course is the wrist check. On my wrist at the moment is the Tudor Black Bay Heritage ETA. This is becoming a vintage classic. It's a watch that I'll never get rid of and it definitely needs a service. <laughs> The movement in these models is visible through the open case back. And I just, I love watches that have open case backs. It just adds personality, it adds flair, it adds a degree of sophistication to your watch because you can see into that, that beating heart. The movement in these models is the Breitling Caliber 01. It's the B01 movement. And this is a self-winding mechanical movement with approximately 70 hours of power. It beats at 28,800 VPH and has 47 joules. These watches are also water resistant to 200 meters and it has sapphire crystal glass with glare proof kind of coating or anti-reflective coating on both sides. I won't repeat myself because I always talk about the fact that that is a positive and a negative. You guys will kind of know what I mean by that. Um, it could be perceived as both, but from filming these watches, Whatever they've done with this glare proof material, it's beautiful to film. It's heavily, heavily Instagrammable, if you want to call it that. It has this beautiful blue sheen to it. And I was playing with that blue sheen a lot as I was filming. A lot of brands don't have that. They just kind of have this white flare that goes over it and kind of overexposes the whole dial. So you can't see into it. But this brand, Breitling, with these new watches, it doesn't have that. It's like this really light blue color and it's... It's, it's nice. Now, please bear in mind when you're watching this video that there are different variations of this watch that have come through. So there are quite a lot of bimetal designs getting released at the moment. And it's interesting what Breitling are doing here because they're, they're, they're diversifying into the more bimetal colors, which I quite like. Bimetal's never been for me per se, but I like to see it and I like the design flares that they include. They are quite nice, but I haven't got hands-on, so it's not fair of me to comment. 
Within that more kind of luxury collection, the higher price point collection, they've actually released a BO1 in full gold, a green BO1 in full gold. And the, the, the contrast between that gold color and the dial, I mean, I've only seen it in the images, but oh my God, it is stunning. It looks so classy, so nice. I, I'm just wondering what you guys think. Would you guys pay that extra extra chunk for a Breitling with gold? Or do you think they should remain in the stainless steel kind of area, so to speak? Let me know in the comments. Because of the graduation into rubber straps, these are actually that little bit more affordable. The rubber strap options come in at about £6,990, so around about the £7,000 mark, and the bracelet version is coming at about £7,400. So you're talking about £410 difference, which is pretty substantial. And on the note of price, I mean, now is as good a time as any. If you are looking for your Breitling watch, make sure you head to chismhunter.co.uk. We are official authorized retailers for Breitling. And if you get your watch from Chism Hunter, you are supporting the Chism Hunter channel. So I'd really appreciate it. I'm a really huge fan of Breitling. I have to say, I really enjoyed filming these watches, getting hands-on with these watches. If you did enjoy this review, please consider hitting that subscribe button to support the channel or follow us on Instagram at Chisholm Hunter Watches or my Instagram at HB Life Lens. Remember that we also have our podcast, which is the Into the Mind podcast. See you soon.